We have a really inspiring story about Samara Ross doing a 25k grant split between some um, black owned businesses. That's a really wholesome story here to feature. Let me put this up here on the screen. This is by Vogue magazine. Um, this is probably the complete opposites of the whole two Virgil fiasco that happened a couple of weeks ago or last week actually in internet time. Oh, that was hilarious, wasn't it? So this is from Vogue. It says, Sammy Ross of a Cold War takes swift and inspiring action to support black owned businesses. It says here, it says, in the wake of the international protest sparked by the census and unjust death of George Floyd, many fashion brands have been slow to act out for meaningful support. In the absence of statements from big players, a wave of small independent labels is paving the way for an anti-racist industry for an anti-racist industry with a focus on raising up others central to this vital movement uh forward is sammy ross of a cold war it's funny to call yourself anti-racist in it like, does anyone refer to yourself as anti-racist really and truly like you're just not a racist or you are in it you can't be anti-racist that's such a weird word um in it continues um on the third of june ross announced via instagram that he was pledging twenty five thousand to support black owned businesses across 20 10 individual grants along with ten thousand donations to black lives matter 72 hours and over seven seven hundred fifty applicants later wow ross has selected the recipients from a range of industries including tech education urban planning agriculture and food as well as retail his team read every submission letter that's amazing so again I, I, and I guess that's the difference when you look at somebody again, not to compare because this is not the time I understand it, but just um, there is a, maybe it's intent. Maybe it's kind of, you know, uh, maybe it's intent. Maybe it's also the idea that some people are just more in tune with what's going on in the world. Right. You can't maybe begrudge Virgil for being a little bit out of touch because essentially, you know, he's at the top of the mountain, right. He's somewhere in Paris, somewhere designing, the collection for like 2025 20, right at this current moment so maybe he could be forgiven for being a little bit out of touch of what black twitter is doing he probably doesn't even know what black twitter is i'd imagine for that regard not not because he's not black because he's just not you know on social as much as we would as much as probably me, you and you or i so i guess if you're a smaller brand and you're maybe you know you have interns who are a bit younger you have interns who are probably of the culture you're specifically kind of placing yourself as a kind of a black owned business which i think samir ross has sort of done in a clever way without actually showing about it he's actually been very clever of how he's moved around to pe the pitch he puts out the models he uses um the look books how they put together there is a very concentrated effort for him to always remind the public that this is owned by a black man and he's going to keep pushing black voices um black aesthetic all this sort of stuff so um i guess he was a little bit more in tune uh, and aware of what was needed right in this moment and it wasn't just like you know nonsense donations given to any tom dick and harry it was kind of actual change right people what the, what do you call them you called agents of change in that regard right people are actually on the ground doing things and giving them a boost right um amplifying their signal retweeting them sharing their stuff on on your instagram stories and this is a really good extension of it right getting twenty five thousand and splitting it evenly between 10 people working in 10 different industries um uh, who are already working and doing the work and kind of propping up what they're doing is a really really good look and so deftly and so kind of um expertly done it's a screenshot from him on his instagram page that says directive compound resources it says my heart and soul is with our brothers and sisters in the usa i'm with you in solidarity and in spirit as a global people continue to donate economic support will assist in expediting the compound and resources tangible change this is an extremely urgent call it's not a forum for discussion nor a moment for inflamed rhetoric or lucid mantras you must understand the gravitas of such traumatic realities do not remain sad and remain focused linking bow i definitely agree with that this is a time for real <coughs> active change but again i think it's happening anyway i think from stuff i've read online if you get away from all the media jug all the media bullshit and all the sensational headlines and the pictures of police officers with you know wounds on their heads or police officers falling off horses and shit for the most part these persons have been quite peaceful there's a lot of there's a lot of workshops a lot of people actually inspiring a lot of people giving people directions on what to do next um loads of really good meetings of the minds intergenerational kind of passing of wisdom all those so good things that are going to act real change on the other side of the thing and i'm sure people outside of those protests are also doing those actions but i like that he's kind of emphasizing it 
um, on his platform. Duh, duh, duh. He says here, the uh, following says, we received an overwhelming response, he says, Ross says via Zoom. My primary thought process is collating the grant list was to understand the struggles businesses are facing in different industries and to look at which fields are disproportionately unrepresented. Historically, he believed fashion, music and sport have been considered industries for people of colour succeeding, yet black bodies are commodified and sexualized by the media. This has a lot to do with the stereotyping and racial purifying. There are so many nuances around blackness and around our modern this is another screenshot it says defend and support by any means necessary black liberation families business and support action the grants for independent black business is 25,000 as 10 individual grants 2.5k each awesome two action two black lives matter financial aid 10 grand for our people on the front line that is amazing and it just clear and to the point again a, a complete contrast of what virgil did and again i think you can't i guess you can't do both things right you can't be both boastful about what you're doing in public and then also be doing things in public and i mean doing things in silence behind the scenes you're just gonna have to either put your money up and shut up or just not talk about it at all and just be all about the action and i guess maybe virgil unfortunately fell in you know right in the middle as you know maybe it's quite um on brand with his off-white name unfortunately and he was maybe unfortunate too that he was you know the first person within that kind of bubble to react to everything that was going on in the shops he probably should have put his phone down when all the looting was happening and it was kind of just a, a victim of all that kind of first week sort of anger and vitriol that was just on the internet and he kind of got the brunt of it don't get me wrong he was still he was still stupid of what he did and now he's on some sort of you know re reclaim his blackness redemption tour posting everything on his instagram stories they done with black artists and collaborators which he doesn't need to do because you know the evidence is there but <sighs> I like how tactful and tasteful Samuel Ross did it. And again, I think the people that received the grants are going to be very, very thankful for. And again, a screenshot of the of the donation, which he didn't need to do. But again, just to put the record, to set the record straight. It continues here. This article from Berg says, Ross was inspired by the forward thinking attitude and agility um, with which the applicants had worked on to not just survive, but to thrive in the turmoil caused by COVID-19 pandemic. It says 75% of the grant recipients who range from the age of 25 to 35 have been running their companies for 18 months or longer. We highlighted businesses which are excelling in ideation and reinvented or bringing a newness to their respective industries. I like that. So it wasn't just like, it wasn't new startups that haven't just, haven't done any business, haven't got any money and I haven't had any traction it's actually people doing the work which is again it's a very I guess it must be hard to decide or in that kind of with the, about that kind of criteria right because there might be some great ideas in theory that have been kind of fleshed out by some kids but they haven't really necessarily been tested um, on the open market and I guess the only way to really just find out if you're cut out for it is to really put some skin in the game and you know put your money up put your mouth is you know going back to what Nassim Taleb sort of speaks about right getting some real skin in the game is really putting your money where your mouth is saving up some capital and actually try testing and trialing your idea in the open market and then when you kind of hit a stumbling block that's when you go and get a loan or you get those grants to help you out you know to kind of give you some breathing room but I like what they did, man. I really do like the idea that, you know, those over 750, you know, different businesses across the UK, or across the world, um, black owned that were working in all these different fields. I thought, you know, that are out there doing God's work and who, who knows what they, might, they may do with that list afterwards. That could be a good archive, a good sort of like um, direction for people to um, go on to, if they want to maybe reach out to black owned businesses to do a certain project that could be really cool. It continues here. It says Jermaine Craig, for example, has created a digital village built on a reliable and empowering system for black communities. His Quanda platform can mobilize fundraising to help people across the world via Slack, be it brought, be it through food support or coding initiatives. That's amazing. Um, Hasim Mohammed, is that his name? Hasima, Hasima Mohammed. Um, meanwhile, has brought a new sensitivity to the male beauty sphere through his Swedish perfume brand entitled Uniform, which was founded in the stairwells of a Stockholm council estate. Another exceptional creative, Michael Omotosho, Omotoso, um, of Plugpo, of Plug Plugel builds industrial household appliances with light and energy solutions embedded in them. Michael's a great example of a black designer coming forward outside of fashion and streetwear. Yeah, that's that's true. Cuz I'm sure he had in, he was inundated with brands, right? Which, you know, it's a bit uh it's a bit boring everyone's doing that, but to have a person to have a guy that's actually making homeware appliances, that's where the real sort of um 
uh, next touch point is right kind of elevating those voices um, is the next way to go because you'd hope these protests will kind of yield that right there's going to be people who are going to lean into the racial grift right the Sean Kings of the world are going to perpetuate this idea that you know there are tyrant they're kind of bands of you know KKK members out there kind of slinging people or lynching people up left right and center but the actual real there's going to be some people that are going to be pushing for real actionable change and that the only way to do one of the best ways to do so is to prop up people within the black community who are doing things outside of the norm outside of kind of like you know the outside of our kind of set conventions and um hopefully allowing the, them to be an example for the next generation so they can think oh cool i can do something else similar to such thing right not just start a t-shirt brand i can also do a homeware appliances i can also maybe do some furniture whatever it may be it continues here it says the health crisis has amplified and intensified the financial pressure weighing on each business on the founder's shoulder many says ross were in the cusp of lease signing leases on their first doors oh damn it had to pivot to online service-based businesses but maintains ross they are entrepreneurs and it's exciting to watch them grow that's one of them that's that um Hussein mohammed from uniform it says ross who says he's been severely disappointed by the fashion industry's response to black lives matter oh haven't we all mate movement has spent two and a half years outlining what black capitalism looks like and what compound resources look like with his friends the grant he says is the first step to ensure economic growth within a black community particularly in britain where the bricks and born zion is based although 25 percent of the applicants were from north america then ross who will work to compound resources and build layers of support driven by emphatic understanding it has to be community driven he believes 100 percent agree with that his number image of the girl called christina uh what what well, how do you pronounce that? Enwagbugo, Enwagbugo, of Ine and Ore. A lovely picture. I love her earrings, actually. It continues here. It says on how fashion and musk can work to continue, sorry, to become truly inclusive. Ross says talent must be procured and nurtured before the stage when students enroll in schools such as Central Martins. He said it shouldn't be an industry hidden from the black community, he says. Ross, who didn't think fashion was a viable career option for him when he was growing up, said next generation must be given time, must be given the time of day and skills to succeed. That's very true. I can only speak for myself going to Central St. Martins. Well, wasn't necessarily the best place for uh, black expression. Um, there was a real need I guess because most of these universities, even the ones in the UK, um, rely heavily on the influx of international students and the money they bring, <coughs> they kind of steer away from. Uh, they kind of steer away from or don't really encourage um people who are indigenous to the country who maybe you know come from different sort of backgrounds to sort of push their voices forward. There is a maybe more of a uniformity in terms of how you express yourself and um how you present your ideas which can be a bit annoying um as probably it's probably a bit different now because they're all underneath that ual umbrella and they've got that amazing new campus and king's cross it probably might alleviate some of those pressures but i do remember it being a bit of a struggle um and i'm always been a bit of an advocate for just steering away from the conventional fashion institutions anyway in the first place i think nowadays with the internet again people always say this but there are so many resources out there that exist pattern work pattern making workshops and you know programs that you can sign up to that you don't necessarily need to go down the you know convoluted way of into uh, you know enrolling into a fashion school going through that rigmarole and having your kind of conf confidence and your ability and your creativity stripped in order for you to kind of learn how to run a business and the only way to run a business is guess what just run a actual fashion business and it, it takes away from the fetishization as well about you know of interning for a brand which i never really understood especially when for the most part you're interning for a brand and you're having to fetch people coffees you know necessarily doing the work so if if this um, sparks that change and if we're kind of living in a moment where kids instead of going to instead of getting themselves in a hundred thousand pounds worth of debt to go to UAL or instead using that money to start their own brands using that money to maybe go in because I'd, I'd, I'd agree if you went to go you know if you decide to start a brand up for a year launch it it didn't work out and then take the next six months to go and work for free for somebody like actually pay them to help you to let them work alongside them right um in a really entry level position way below your actual skill level so they can just learn how the business operates and then go back to business that'd be awesome but doing it within the prism of working in a university it's just a little bit 
it's a little bit naive it's a little bit infantile right it's a little bit amateurish you need to actually go out there and make the thing work and again um i think the industry as well will be best served by having loads of um fashion creatives who've actually done the work in the field who've sold bags to actual real people so that when those spots or those opportunities do rise up in you know the big luxury houses you've got people that are prepared to do the work and kind of step into that platform because that's the thing that you don't want right you don't want some kid from a university who has got no experience of what actual real women want who's just kind of designing everything in theory trying to then decide how to design a bag for armani that's going to sell in you know a thousand different places you want someone that's actually got some kind of a level of commercial minded thinking in that regard i would hope so i don't know it continues here it says is it more yep last bit it says the infrastructure of companies too he said must urgently change so that black people are employed at c-suite level i definitely agree with that black people need to be hired for their intellect and credentials not as a marketing tool 100 percent agree with that only when all business decisions got made by a fully representative board of directors without deep rooted systemic prejudice can fashion be moved forward there's still a long way to go but ross an inspiring group of change group changes are leading the way forward explore the 11 recipients split in the 25k below that's all them there in tech design and engineering fashion and retail arts and creation beauty and grooming and food and catering that is so cool man well done to everybody involved there man really really amazing to see and again great work from sammy ross but we shouldn't be surprised in it